Oh, pace yourself. Dinner could be a while. I still have a few things to prepare. I hadn't expected you to be so interested in paint. I once tried grinding mist flowers into powder and mixing it with white paint to replicate the sparkle of snowflakes. The end result was quite satisfactory, but works that use this kind of paint need to be stored carefully. If you want to try it for yourself, I can help you. Even now, I don't believe I have fully grasped the nature of the threat that Dragonspine poses. But I will endeavor to keep you safe. That much you can trust in. <laughs> I wish I could simply respond with, I'm fine. But you are a true friend to me. So I should be honest with you. Recently, certain questions have been occupying my mind. Questions about the nature of life and creation. However, I feel that rushing into a discussion with you on these topics before my ideas on them are fully formulated will bring you far more confusion than clarity. So I will wait till my thoughts are clear in my own head before I share them with you. Until then, please forgive me. Don't worry about it. A chance like this to gather around the fire and chat into the night is a rare and precious one for me. I won't participate in the conversation much. It's just a habit of mine. But please know that I am enjoying the atmosphere all the same. Of course, I'm happy to continue chatting with you if you'd like. This is my camp, but let's not get bogged down in technicalities. I want you to be able to relax and make yourself at home here. I wonder if there's anything I could do to help out. Oh, you mean Gerald? I heard that Eula developed a whole training program for him. He might be new, but I bet he'll improve pretty quickly with a mentor like that. <sighs> I feel bad. It's hard knowing that I've been causing so much trouble for everyone. Being a little unlucky is usually no big deal for me. But in a place like this, it makes me worry that something really bad might come of it. No, wait, I shouldn't have said that. I might have actually jinxed it now. <laughs> you know me, same old Bennett, unlucky as ever. But as long as bad luck doesn't break me, I'll always get back up again. Especially on a cool adventure like this one, I gotta make the most of it. <laughs> Sorry for dragging you guys into another situation. I didn't used to know any of these knights very well, but after spending some time with them on this trip, it's really opened my eyes to my own shortcomings. They're all so talented and kind. I have a lot to learn from them. Oh yeah, you gotta tell me sometime how you managed to make friends with so many talented people. Okay, cool. Make sure you eat plenty when dinner's ready. This is quite cozy for Dragonspine. I'm pleasantly surprised. I gave it a try, and I actually quite enjoyed it. <laughs> but Amber said the snowman I made was too artistic. Apparently, the conventional style is more rotund in appearance. I couldn't tell if she was complimenting me or mocking me. Either way, I'm not about to let it go. I'm quite familiar with Dragonspine by now, but this time, I have a newcomer to worry about, and I'm traveling in a group with Amber and the others, not things I'm terribly well accustomed to. Still, I've taken the job, so of course I'll do what's asked of me to the fullest of my ability. I'll settle this score once this is all over. Me? I'm coping perfectly well. I don't need looking after. You should talk to Amber and Bennett. They're not as well acquainted with Dragonspine as I am. Seeing how much you can find to talk about even with Albedo, 
You must be quite the conversationalist. So put that skill to good use. Teach them all how to survive on Dragonspine. I'm sure this is well within your capability, no? If you're talking about Bennett's situation, I think I'm used to it now. It's hardly the end of the world. Don't ruminate on it. Take this chance to get some proper rest. The nights are long on Dragonspine. <sighs> A glass of ice-cold wine would not go amiss right now. Don't mind me. Just do whatever you like. Ah, it's so nice and warm here. Joel's been doing pretty good. Having people to play with has put him in a good mood. I'll tell you what, though. He seems to have even more stamina than me. <laughs> so long as they're playing, kids always seem to have endless amounts of energy. It's more dangerous up here than I thought. In a hostile environment like this, even a Knight of Favonius has to keep their eyes open and keep their wits about them at all times. Still, this has been a pretty unique adventure for me. It's definitely been worth it. You know, when I was keeping Joel company, I started missing my grandfather really bad. After he disappeared, I never saw him again. I have no idea how he's doing. But at least what I can do is focus on being a great outrider. If I can do that well, I know he'd be proud. Oh, all that? Uh, don't worry about it. Eula is a good person. She might not show it, but she'd never let that kind of stuff get to her. As for Bennett, he seems like the kind of guy who can keep his spirits up when things aren't going well. I feel bad having to ask so much of Albedo, though. Still, it's kind of nice to have everyone together like this, so yay for silver linings! Sure thing, bet you're tired as well. You should get some rest too. Pace yourself. Dinner could be a while. I still have a few things to prepare. It's almost ready now. Traveler, please light the campfire and gather everyone for dinner. I made a few dishes based on some popular Mondstadt recipes. This is no good hunter, but there should be enough to go around. Please, help yourselves. Wow, smells great. Don't mind if I do. Wait, don't steal all the fried vegetables. Uh, leave some for me. Hey! Oh, what a great meal! Albedo, you're too modest. These dishes are as good as anything you'd find in the top restaurant. Are all alchemists so good at cooking? Hmm, you may be onto something there. Right? Paimon thinks so too! It's his lab manner that gives it away. The kind of guy who holds a potion bottle as steady as a rock isn't the kind of guy who's gonna be slapdash with the salt and pepper. Actually, that makes a lot of sense. <laughs> I'm so sleepy after all that food. <sighs> Did Bennett fall asleep sitting up? <laughs> he must be totally wiped out. The way he's sleeping is so... alert. I'm impressed. <sighs> he seems to be in a deep sleep. Ooh, Paimon wonders if he sleep talks. 
Ugh. Oh, no, Dad. No apples for me. I want sticky honey roast and fisherman's toast. Sticky honey roast? That's your favorite, isn't it, Amber? Mmm, sure is. Give me a sticky honey roast from Good Hunter any day. I used to take Eula to Good Hunter a lot back when we first met. Before long, Sarah would start cooking our usual orders as soon as she saw us coming. She said we ordered the same thing so often that it was practically muscle memory by that point. <laughs> she also said that if everyone in Mondstadt ordered like we do, her job would be so much easier. All she'd have to do is memorize everyone's favorites. <clears throat> Always eating together. Ah, it's nice that you two are so close. The Traveler and Paimon always eat together, too. It's a sure sign of true friendship. Two people simply sharing a meal says nothing either way about the relationship between them. <laughs> that depends if it's a one-off meal or a regular occurrence. Aha! Paimon just noticed something. Whenever Eula doesn't want to admit to something, she raises her chin or puts her hands on her hips. <laughs> ah, you've all picked up on that. Didn't know Eula's tells were so easy to spot. <sighs> we are done here, yes. I am free to go, am I not? Then please excuse me. I have a frozen lake I need to be at. You're going for an ice bath at this time of night? W wait up! Don't go without me! I thought you wanted to get some sleep. So maybe you should stay here and rest. No, I should come with you. It's late, and it's dark, and you're not good with directions like I am. Come on, let's go together. An ice bath? Whew, rather them than Paimon. So much roast meat. Oh, hey, Dad. I'm doing all right. I'm the leader of my own adventure team now. Wow. Ben, it really is a sleep talker. Okay, looks like we got some downtime now. All right, you two. Time to paint. Have you decided what to paint? <laughs> like you even need to ask. It's obviously going to be Paimon. Sure. But we should move elsewhere. We're likely to disturb Bennett's sleep if we stay here, so let's go outside. Okie dokie. All right, grab your easel, paper, brushes, and paints. Don't leave anything behind. That mechanism, or you'll fall down. Oh, well, never mind. Uh, what the heck is this guy dreaming about? Here. Allow Paimon to adopt an elegant pose for your artistic reference. Hey! What's that look for? Cut the attitude and start putting your perfect Paimon down on the page! You better take this seriously, because this is going on Paimon's wall! Confidence is a good thing. Those to whom it is endowed do well to flaunt it. I'm looking forward to the finished piece. Paimon's face. Huh? 
Is that how Paimon really looks to you? Uh... Okay, forget it. We can come back to that. Let's move on to the body. Come on, paint what you see when you look at Paimon. Uh... Paimon's starting to feel like this is not going to turn out so great. Let me see. Let Paimon see. <gasps> what is this? Why you... How could... Uh, Paimon is lost for words. The brushwork is smooth and the composition seems professional quality. You had no problems there. So what the heck happened with the face, huh? Explain that stupid expression. Explain it! Uh... <laughs> smooth... Professional quality? And those eyes! Those boring, lifeless eyes! Where's the soul? Uh, Traveler? Have you previously received any education in the fine arts? What? You pour your heart on the page and this is what comes out? Special, huh? You seriously think special is supposed to look this ugly? Paimon's not convinced. But Paimon is struggling to come up with a comeback. Fascinating. Paimon, if this is not to your liking, I can make a few amendments. Uh, Traveler, what do you think? <sighs> All right then. Paimon. Is this better? It's... It's... It's a total ground-up overhaul! That's what it is! It's so pretty! Is that really what Paimon looks like? Adding flourish to the finished piece is an essential component of what makes art... Art? This is not to say that you differ from the painting on a fundamental level. Rather, that the real you and the you in the painting present two different styles of beauty. You remain the core reference point for the painting. So, Paimon, you can put your misgivings aside and hang this painting wherever you like. Wow! Thanks, Albedo. Oh, I merely added a flourish here and there. You should be thanking the Traveler. In truth, ground-up overhaul is more or less an... Accurate description. The more Paimon looks at it, the more she likes it. <laughs> Great! Paimon has a portrait painting. Paimon's gonna show this off to everyone. It's nothing. I can paint you next time, if you'd like. You can hang it in your home as a souvenir. I rarely entertain so many guests at my camp. It's lively, a little noisy even, but I don't dislike it. Liveliness is a rare thing here on Dragonspine. Ah, it's a new day! Let's go meet up with everyone! Great last night. How about you guys? All rested up? I'm fine, as usual. The path down the mountain is easier to follow in the daylight. Let's take this chance to head down to the base camp. Let's go! If we make good time, maybe we can all get lunch together. I flipped another insignia just outside the camp. Wrong again! So your bad luck is all used up. We'll be down the mountain in no time. <laughs> yeah, my thoughts exactly. Today's the day. Huh? Uh, oh no, avalanche! Look out! <laughs> <laughs> Ugh. <sighs> 
Traveler, Paimon, are you all right? Are you hurt? Uh, Paimon's fine. Oh, that's good. My arm got a little scratched up, but it's nothing serious. I'm okay, but I don't see the other two. I'm afraid the avalanche may have pushed them off the cliff. They fell down? They'll be okay though, right? I think they're both robust enough to survive the fall. But if the falling debris knocked them unconscious, and they're lying there in the freezing cold, we have to get down there and rescue them. Immediately. Okay, let's move! Hang in there, guys! dizzy, but I'm not in any pain. I don't think I'm injured. Thank goodness. Scared the life out of me. If you're dizzy, sit and rest for a while. Ah, uh, it's fine, really. This kind of thing happens all the time. I'll be fine. Thank you. Wait, where's Albedo? Isn't he with you guys? We thought he fell off the cliff with you! He still hasn't shown up? We found Bennett here. So Albedo can't be far away. Keep searching this area. Got it! of him? <sighs> Not a trace. Nothing for me, either. Strange. We didn't have any luck, either. Where could he have gone? Everyone! Ah! Albedo! <sighs> are... are you okay? Nothing serious. Okay. Everyone accounted for. Guys, I... I think... It's gotta be because of me. The avalanche only happened because I'm here. I guess flipping a treasure hoarder insignia isn't gonna change my luck after all. No wonder no one wants to go adventuring with me. <sighs> I'm so sorry. Don't say that. I'm hardly the lucky type myself, so I'm not about to go blaming every little thing that goes wrong on you. Exactly. Besides, Dragonspine is a dangerous place. Avalanches literally come with the territory. Bad luck has nothing to do with it, okay? Traveler, what's wrong? Your face looks... <gasps> oh no, did you get hit on the head? Here. Everyone, the incident is behind us now. We should keep moving. Why do I feel that Dragonspine has become more dangerous than it used to be? I hope it's just my imagination. Our top priority now is to get off the mountain and regroup with the adventurers. Whatever further dangers this mountain has to throw at us, we must face them together. Agreed. Guys, keep your eyes peeled and watch your step. Careful does it.
been heading in the right direction for a good length of time now. We must be getting close. I can feel it. Victory is in sight! Hooray! As soon as we get to base camp, Paima wants a bowl of hot soup and some barbecued meat. I hope we can all get there safely. No more incidents, please. Isn't it? Uh, are you hungry? Cold? Shall Paimon hug your head to warm you up? I don't think I've spent so much time on Dragonspine before. It sure is cold, but the view is amazing. <sighs> Isn't it, Eula? Hmm. Eula? Sorry, I wasn't listening. What did you say? I was just thinking. Whenever I've met up with you at Dragonspine in the past, we always stick to the same few spots. It's much more vast and beautiful here than I realized. If it were a little warmer and a little safer, I bet this place would be bustling with visitors. I agree. People are put off by the cold and have an aversion to danger. They don't realize that there is much to explore beneath the icy exterior, if you were willing to spend the time and energy. Albedo, is this the way down? Yes. I think there are several routes in this area. Mm, does the path fork off here? It looks like it does. Mm, but maybe it doesn't. My head's still a little fuzzy from the impact. I'm kind of dizzy, too. I keep thinking things are swaying a little. Uh, maybe I'm just hungry. Neither path will work for us. The smaller trail is less worn and harder to see, but it's also shorter. Since everyone is weary, I suggest we take the shortcut. Follow me. Wait. Bennett and Amber don't look well. Can we take a break? We can continue once their conditions have improved. Ugh. Now that you mention it... Huh? I... You hit your head earlier, didn't you? Oh, you, you noticed. Are you sure it's worth holding everyone up over a little thing like this? No problem at all! Health and safety always come first! Okay, sorry for this. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Drinking some water can help with the dizziness. Oh, and, uh, lying flat on your back helps, too. Thank you, Bennett. Seems like you really know your stuff. <laughs> well, when life gives you lemons... Bennett, weren't you feeling dizzy, too? Stop pushing yourselves, both of you. Get some rest. We'll continue when you've gathered your energy. Yula might come off as a little frosty, but she takes caring for her friends super seriously, more than anyone else I know. Every time I see that look on her face, I'm just like, ah, stop staring at me. Traveler, I know what that look means. What's on your mind? Maybe seasoned veterans have an instinct for it. I sense it too. Something seems to have changed, but I can't confirm for sure. It could be difficult to verify. It might be imprudent to speculate out loud, but I believe you know what I am referring to. <laughs> Traveler. 
traveler. I think... You... Not over yet. Brace yourselves. This will be a challenge. Stay back. I'm going to cut this wheat down to size. are against us. Make for 
for mercy. More speed. Mercy. <laughs> what in the world was that thing? One moment it was human, the next it was a plant! Is everyone all right? We're fine. But can you please tell us what's going on? I... I don't understand. I take it this monster is whom I had the pleasure of meeting last time. Correct. As you might have guessed, this is a mutated whopper flower. An extremely rare kind. But can whopper flowers turn into humans? Not typically. But conditions on Dragonspine are far from typical. Perhaps the dragon's blood seeped into the land, then was passed to the monsters via the ley lines, accelerating their rate of mutation. How could that happen? This mountain is home to the remains of Durin, the venomous dragon. If there is anywhere in the world one might expect life to do unfathomable things, it would most likely be here. Durin was an artificially created life form. Its existence is nothing short of a miracle, and proof of countless possibilities. In other words, this mountain we stand on is a cradle of life's profoundest mysteries. A vast and terrifying hotbed of possibilities. The Avalanche? It must have been the work of this imposter. Agreed. All the other troubles you faced on the way down could also have been its handiwork. My guess is that it was targeting everyone that I've had contact with. Right, I forgot all about that. It's not inconceivable. But what was its purpose? Was it just trying to get rid of us? Hmm... I have a preliminary hypothesis on this. Whopper flowers are masters of mimicry, and those we encounter in the wild often appear in the vicinity of the plants they impersonate. In other words, the whopper flower likely has an instinct to replicate and replace. As a plant, it will disguise itself as another plant and infiltrate the group, hiding among them for cover. The plant being imitated has no way to detect or fight back against this behavior. But, when it disguises itself as a human... It wanted to replace you and infiltrate our group? Yes. Maybe it created the avalanche to get rid of us. I predicted this eventuality, so I availed myself of the avalanche to hide and lure it out. It was watching us the whole time. And when it saw that I had disappeared, its instinct was to take my place. At that point, its disguise was complete and its next move was to hunt its prey. Yes, that's exactly how Whopper Flowers operate. So when it approached and attacked Joel, what was that? A trial run? Perhaps. Or maybe it enjoyed posing as a human, and wanted to experience what it felt like to be human. We're fortunate to have discovered it in time. 
I think the Traveler was the first person other than Albedo to notice something was wrong. Traveler? How could you tell the real me and my imposter apart? I want to know too. I had no idea the other guy was an imposter. They looked exactly the same to me. I see. It goes to show how difficult it is to impersonate a human. This mutant whopper flower tried its best to replicate the original exactly, but still managed to miss some details. Unbelievable. To think that Dragonspine creates such terrifying possibilities. Anyway, at least we won in the end. It looks like my method did work after all. <laughs> I used up all the bad luck, and the good luck finally came through! About that... If you're referring to having fallen down the mountain and avoided injury... Well... That's because I was secretly protecting you. <laughs> huh? Uh... Well, that still counts as good luck to me. <laughs> Yes, that's not an unreasonable way of looking at it. <sighs> okay. We've been delayed long enough. Time to move on. Yeah! Let's go! Hmm. <sighs>